Okay, so in the last video, we, we introduced the idea of the inverse trig functions, um, or the arc trig functions, if you like. And we talked about how when you're defining these, you have to be careful because trig functions are certainly not one-to-one. -one. Uh, in fact, they're, they're periodic. They're about as far from one-to-one -one as you can get without being a constant function. And so it, before you can define an inverse, you have, to, you have to choose some small piece of the domain on which these functions are one-to-one. -one. So what you have to do is you have to say, okay, when I say arc sine, what does that mean? So when I say that y equals, um, well, if you like sine inverse of x um, or arc sine of x, whichever notation you prefer, what does this mean? Well, it means two things. Okay, it means that Sine of y is equal to x. Yes, that much is true. Um, but also that y, right, and, and think of y as an angle, right? It's an input for sine. Um, where is that angle? That angle has to be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, okay? That's the domain that we choose for the sine function so that we have an interval on which the sine function is 1 to 1. And we get that entire range all the way from minus 1 to plus 1, right? Um, so when you see y equals arc sine of x, right, um, we're not, you know, there's this extra bit of information that you have to keep track of, right? We're saying that sine of y equals x, but also y is an angle that's in this interval here, right? Fourth quadrant or first quadrant. Okay. All right. So how do we find f prime? Well, what we can do is... We can let y equal to arc sine of x. From here, we know that that means that sine of y equals x. And now we take the derivative of both sides, right? So the derivative of sine is cosine. But then we have to multiply by y prime, right? Because it implies the differentiation. So cos y times y prime equals the derivative of x, which is 1. All right, so here's y prime. 1 over cosine of y. Not the most enlightening formula, right? Not what you really want to end up with. This is supposed to be f prime of x, right? It should be something in terms of x, not y. So how do we, how do we simplify this? Where do we go from here? Well, what we can do is we can come over here and... Now I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw a little triangle, which isn't always representative because you know we might be dealing with an angle which is negative. But let's pretend that we're in a first with a first quadrant angle, right? Um, so y is arc sine of x, right? So oops, y is the angle here. So let's put an angle named y into our triangle, right? Now. How do we define sine of an angle in, in triangle trig, right? For right, right triangle trig. S opposite over adjacent, right? So think of x as x over 1. Or sorry, opposite over hypotenuse, right? So if I draw a triangle with this side length equal to x, hypotenuse 1, sine of y will be x over 1. It'll be x. Works. Pythagoras gives us the other side, right? This side squared plus x squared equals 1. Solve for the missing side. We get 1 minus x squared. Okay? So then we can say that cosine, cos of y, well, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is 1 minus x squared. Hypotenuse is 1. So we just get 1 minus x squared. So that's what we put in over here. Square root of 1 minus x squared. Right? And that is the derivative of the arc sine function. All right. A uh, couple of comments before we end the video. 
what if x is negative here? Or what if y is negative, right? Actually, they kind of come together. But what, what, if, what if we have a fourth quadrant angle? The picture doesn't work. Well, the other thing we can do is we could say, well, so, so suppose sine of y is equal to x, right? Um, we know that sine squared y plus cos squared y is equal to 1. We know that sine y is x. So, so sine squared, right, is just sine y squared. That's just x squared, right? So, so x squared plus cos squared y equals 1, right? So here we can solve for cos y, right? Bring the x squared over, 1 minus x squared, like you see down there. And then to solve, take square roots. And then you're probably wondering, wait, 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 when I take square roots, there's a positive square root, there's a negative square root. How do I know which one to choose, right? Well, remember that in the definition of arc sine, there's this other piece of information, right? We're not just saying that sine of y equals x. We're also saying that y has to be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, okay? So that means that, you know, if we're thinking in terms of the unit circle, y is somewhere in here. And what do we know about cosine in these two quadrants? Cosine is always positive in those two quadrants, right? So I know when I'm solving for cos that I should take the positive square root. So I know that that's the right answer, and that's going to work for any x value between minus 1 and 1, right? For any x value in the, in the domain, that's going to give me the answer. Okay, so that's nice. We're satisfied. We've got the right answer. Um, we've got our derivative. And, and what's interesting is the derivative involved, it's, it's, it's a radical function, right? There's, there's no trig or anything like that involved here. It's, it's, a, it's a bit surprising. It's a bit odd, right? Um, it, it comes from the fact that you do have these sort of algebraic relationships, these identities between the trig functions, right? That's why you, you end up with a formula like that. But the first time you see it, it, it should be maybe a little bit surprising um, that you take the derivative of, of a inverse trig function, and you get something that has nothing to do with trig. It's kind of neat. Uh, we'll do one more example, and then we're going to move on.